The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 23rd, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you've got a question and you can't call in, Stevie here has got your back. All you need to do is send me an email. Send it off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, inside our Tiger's Den. Well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We begin our day with a, a sea of green out there. All the U.S. indices that we track trade to the upside. All the sectors inside the S&P 500, with the exception of the consumer staples, it's back about uh, seven, eight, seven, eight pennies, trade out at 81.53. The Dow's up 350 points, eight tenths, eight tenths for the S&P or 46 points, eight tenths for the Nasdaq 100, 158 points, three percent for the Russell, <coughs> a 63 point move there. Semis are up over 2%, 113. Trendy's up 209. Gold's up 33 bucks, one and three tenths. Silver's up two and three tenths, or 67 cents. Lights recruit up a buck 44, 2% there. Natural gas up three pennies. 30 year Treasury's up uh, 24 ticks, printed out at 124.25. Now, our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is Workday. It's up 25 buck Rooney's, 11%. Cava Group, 18 bucks, 17%. Our restoration holdware, 17 bucks, 6%. Wingstop, 16 bucks, 4%. To the downside is Netflix off 7 bucks. That's a 1% move. PDD Holdings, 7 bucks, 4 and nearly 5% move to the downside. Intuitive Surgical, 5 bucks, 1%. GE Verono, Ver, Vernova, it's off 3%, 5 bucks. MasterCard off 4 bucks, a little bit less than 1% to the downside. So we got movers and we've got shakers, but let's begin our day. You know, let's just begin our day here. New York Stock Exchange, Advanced Decline, Oscillator. Um, geez, it's still back above that 150 level. Uh, we still have a lower high, at least we do at this moment in time. This is a, a overbought market condition. So that's the first thing to be paying attention to. What's the second thing is Spot VIX index. Spot VIX index right now closed yesterday above the 50 day. Today we're down below it, it being 1685. We're trading at 1643. We close black below that 50 day exponential moving average. It gives the edge to the buyers for the S&P 500. So we'll keep those two things in consideration. If we take a look at our perigee pivot point out here, in the case of the ES mini, it's at the uh, level of 5628.75 to be exact. In the NQ, it's at 1984450. With regard to gold, we're looking at 2553. In all three of these cases, that level has been tested. Now, in the case of the ES mini, uh, we closed above it. Uh, in that last half hour, the last half hour coming into uh, 1030, uh, so into 11 o'clock, I should say, we tested and rejected that level. So that is a bullish outcome for the ES Mini. Um, if we take a look at the NQ, the NQ is not as, uh, well, the NQ hasn't done that same thing. The NQ closed above perigee pivot point for one 30-minute bar. The very next one, it traded back below that level. So we got uh, we got uh, different messages out here. Goldilocks hitting right into that perigee pivot point at 25.5340 and backing off. So you want to watch that. If price closes above that, at least on a short-term basis, things would be bullish, like they are for silver, like they are for light speed crude. And the dollar here, you can see that one uh, half-hour uh, half move 
from nine uh, from ten to ten thirty. Big move to the uh, downside. So we'll certainly take a look at the currency pairs. But we have the TD nine count tops that are still in place out there. So let's go switch over and take a look at our white background. A screen and the charts that are out there. We'll start surfing through there. So we'll start here with the uh, daily equity future contract. So you had a TD9 count breakdown level. That was up at the uh, price range of uh, 56.64. Price basically hit that uh, yesterday, hit that again today. So that's a key level of resistance. But the most key level is yesterday's high. And that high out there is at the uh, 56.65 and a quarter level. If price were to close above that, then the TD9 count for the ES Mini would get negated. As far as where support is at, now, this my system, my white background system, is not picking up that new profile. I'm not sure why, but sometimes that's just the way it is. But that new profile at this stage here should take hold, has taken hold on my black background screen. 56.65 and a quarter being uh, resistance and again support at 55.16 and a quarter out there. With regard to the NQ, uh, it does show the new profile. It does show the TD9 count uh, top um, and only a close above the way that that would get negated. I assume it's 20, 25, but let me just make sure here. The uh, no 19. 981.75. 19.981.75 is the level that price would have to close above to negate that signal of support down at 19.326. The Dow at the moment is trading above yesterday's high. That's the TD9 count pattern high. And a close today about 41.159 will negate that signal. And to me, that would suggest because we're trading inside the all-time spring point high from back on July 18th, that price would go target that high. And that high is at 41.672. In the case of the Russell 2000 equity future contract, we are in bar number seven. Price above a green oscillator and change line. Price above the top of its profile. Uh, this is likely going to go ahead and uh, continue to trade higher. May go on. And this may go on would be between Monday and Wednesday of next week form a TD9 count top out there. No other pattern that I have here for the Russell 2000 is trading above its 0.68 retracement level. Its next price target to the upside uh, would be the 0.786 uh, floor. That's at 22.50. So I'd say 22.50 is its target. Now let's switch from this set of charts here. I'm going to close these down at the moment. Uh, my apology. Things are going to be a little bit slower and delayed. I had a technical issue. Uh, just as we were coming on the air, there was no time for me to really shut things down and start them back off. So uh, uh, so sorry about that, but it won't be that much of a delay. And if we need to, Stevie will tell you a joke or something. Eh, probably not. So here's the cash indice. So if we take a look at the cash indice for the Dow, a close above yesterday's high. Yesterday's high was 41.026.64. We get a close above that. It negates that signal and says we move higher. In the case of the S&P 500, TD9 count is still in effect out there. Only a close above yesterday's side, 56.43.22 would negate that. Otherwise, price should pull back to test support. That's the oscillator and change line. That's at 55.31. The NQ, same pattern, the NDX100. And, and uh, its TD9 count threshold level up at the high, 19.938.89. And, and only if price takes that out will we move higher. Otherwise, price should pull back to support around 19.304. In the case of Russell 2000, we already covered uh, that out there. I take that back. What we covered was the uh, future contract. Here on the daily uh, chart, you can see really the same thing. Price finding support of that green oscillator and change line, bar number seven, we should continue to move higher. The semis have a TD9 count top. What would negate that? Well, what would negate that would be a close above 5288.54. Support for the semis down at 5021. See Roads with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. There's no better time than now to sign up for Live Trading Fridays. Why is that? That's because the next trading session, this Friday, August 23rd, coincides with Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech. Chairman Powell's comments have the power to greatly move the market, and Larry is ready to capture those gains on the moves. Use code LARRYAUG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month. See you there, Tigers. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We've got a, quite a few requests that have come in, so we're going to go ahead and get to those so we don't fall too far behind. To, to fall too far behind. So let's start with Arm Holdings, just for G-Man inside the Tiger's Den. So Arm Holdings has a TD9 count top that would be negated with a close above the high from August 20th. That high, that TD9 count top was 135.60. That candle has uh, tested today. That had 5.8 million shares. It's being tested with 4 million shares already. You're pushing that swing point with volume, even if it closes below the high. Of that August 20th level, you should be back up there at least one more time. If price closes above that and negates that signal, you're inside a bullish structured profile in the daily time frame. Our whole arm holdings would then target 149.63 and above that 167.15. So, regardless of today's action, other than a close above that high at 135.60, you're likely to be back up there again perhaps on Monday. On a weekly time frame, a TD9 count top found support at the breakout level. Its target is likely 144.69 to 152.04. 152.04 is where price would uh, uh, end if it was just a counter trend move to the upside. No information here on the uh, monthly time frame. If we do take a look at the daily dance steps out there, what we'll see is yesterday was the uh, first it was a single bar to the downside. We have not seen even a two-bar move to the downside out there. So strong like bull when you take a look at arm holdings. And that ain't no bull out there. That's simply its dance step. So I hope that helps you out, G-Man. I know you had another request, which we will get to. Uh, but first, we're going to go take a look at, for Gray Rock, the Russell 2000. So let's get over to take a look at those charts out here. We take a look at the Russell 2000. What do we see? Well, when we take a look at that cash indice, you can see price remains above that green oscillator and change on your bar number seven. You're likely to continue to move higher. This may form a TD9 count top between Monday and Wednesday. The weekly chart supports that move higher because we're trading above its green oscillator and change line. And the same can be said about the monthly time frame chart that does not have any kind of a uh, topping pattern out there. So the Russell 2000 should continue to move higher. Now, um, we had uh, Hector and Patty right in, and they wanted to take a look at the IWM. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to go over to my other sets of charts out there, because the question is really about the eight different A to B equals CD pattern. So what is Stevie C? We're going to change screens here. 
if you give me a moment, change windows, it will be on that black background screen. I'd like you to ignore whatever profiles show up there. Oh, no, I take that back. We're looking at the IWM. So here's what we know about the IWM. The IWM has got a uh, sell the D point top. It's got two of them. One at 225.42 on the daily time frame, one at 226.64. So those are your key resistance levels on the daily time frame uh, out there. You've got really a similar type of setup, two different sell the D point tops inside of the Russell 2000 as well. Um, I didn't have those noted out there, but we have those here on the IWM. You can take a snapshot of this and you probably have the same exact pattern inside the daily cash indice. There is a confirmed A to B equals C depending on the upside on the weekly basis. The B point is going to be the swing point for March 25th, 2020. 116 million shares when this was passed with 174 million shares. That one-to-one, -one, let me just open up the screen out here. The one-to-one -one takes us up to 241.55. That is the active A to B equals CD pattern that's in place for the weekly time frame chart. And that will get us back to its all-time highs that came in back in November of 2021. We're trading above profile resistance out there. Uh, I, we're trading above its green asset and change line, even though it's not shown here. So that supports further move higher. In the case of the uh, monthly time frame chart, monthly time Time frame chart has simply just made it to the 0.786 retracement of that entire move to the downside. The move to the downside I'm referring to was back from the high in 2021 to the low out here in 2023 in November. So it's not, uh, you know, it's 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 a uh, it's like like the uh, cash indice out there. I'm sure we're about the same level out there. In fact, the cash indice be 2264.70 is uh, uh, is the actual 0.61. Uh, 0.786 retracement area. So you really need to see price close above that to suggest we're going to get back to its size. So that's the only resistance point that I see. But Hector and Patty, if you're asking, is there a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern on the um, on the weekly time frame? The answer to that would be yes. Uh, you had a potential. You've got uh, 682 million shares on the monthly chart, and that was passed with uh, 842,000. But that's really just going to get me the same. 2023. Maybe it's not going to give me this. Uh, no, it gets me the exact same A to B equals CD pattern out there, which would take us up to the 241.55 level. So Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out. Gray Rock, I hope that helped you out as well. You got a twofer, so to speak. Uh, we have the next request coming in from G-Man. He would like to take a look at Apple. So we take a look at what Apple is doing out here. It's got a TD9 count top that is still in place. That TD9 count top would only get negated with a close above 228.34. Now, if price were to close above today, if price were to close above 213, I'm sorry, 225.60, 225.60, if price closes above that, odds would favor that that TD9 count high is going to get tested. Why? Because in Apple, price would be above both the resistance of the top of its profile and its oscillator and change line. Now, the volume yesterday on that candle, uh, which was pushing higher and pushing lower, we got above the prior day's high, above the prior day's low, was 43 million shares. So far today, in two hours of trading, you're 12 million shares, so you're about 36 million or so going into 43 million, so not bad volume out there. So watching Apple, what you want to do is watch today's close. Is it above 225.60? If it is, it favors the idea of going and testing that TD9 count top. Uh, we can see that the weekly chart is dealing with a resistance level, the top of its profile, 228.21. So if you get a real decent rally and you close above 228.21, you're going to go back and test the all-time high. Now, on a weekly basis, that swing point, that form, that high was back was 278 million shares. So far this week, you're at 162. So you're moving into that with lighter volume. 228.21 likely holds through the rest of the day. No topping signal on the monthly time frame. Price is in a bullish breakout mode on that monthly basis. So Vic, that's what I see when I take a look at um, uh, Apple on the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame. One last piece of information on the daily time frame. What yesterday was, was the first two-day, two-bar knee-jerk reaction low that we've seen ever since that low that came in on that Monday, August the 5th out there. That's a normal bullish reaction out here, is a two-day move to the downside. So maybe, even though we've got all those TD9 count tops out there, I mean, across the board and so many different things, maybe they just simply are going to fail. Let's go on to our next request, which is coming in from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. We'd like to take a look at ticker symbol VFC. Jeez, I sure hope I had changed screens today. I did not. Ah, Stevie, Stevie. Ah, shoot. That was VFC. We're going to change those screens right now. I apologize for having to repeat myself. Uh, and I, uh, 
but it is what I've got to do out here. So here's VFC. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't VFC. What was it we were looking at? Was it? Shoot. I think it was Apple. So I'll go back and I'll put the Apple charts. But here's VFC for Dan. Dan, we take a look at VFC. You're trading above the top of its daily profile, which is 1665. Should go target that green oscillator and change line, 1746. It's acted as resistance for about the last six trading sessions or so. Your price can close above 1746. This is likely going to rally back towards its high out there. That form that Rhodes meant to indicate top back on August the 7th. Um, if we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you're trading above profile resistance. If it closes the week above 1701, we're at seven, uh, 1732. That's a bullish signal. The real level of resistance out here, Dan, is coming from that monthly time frame chart. It's at 1875. If this can close above 1875 on a monthly basis, you got action, Jackson. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Prize for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Go 
Welcome back, folks. So I'm going to redo Apple here for you because it wasn't showing up on my screen. This is for, I believe this was for um, G-Man, and uh, Eddie wrote in about this as well. So let's start on the very right-hand side. Apple is in a total bullish breakout mode. Trade above the top of its profile, 198.23, and its oscillator and change line. In a weekly time frame, you got price consolidating with inside its profile. It's got resistance up at 228.21. That's the top of the profile. We're trading inside that swing point from a weekly standpoint with much lighter volume. That weekly swing point had volume of 278 million shares. This week, we are up with 162. On a daily time frame, yesterday completed a TD9 count top. That says yesterday's high is the key level of resistance at 228.34. You close above that. We had higher out there. If you close below the green oscillator and change line, price will have lost some momentum. That is at 225.33. And that would then suggest we head back to 219.68, 213.76, or 211.97. As I pointed out, yesterday was a two bar knee jerk reaction low, at least at this stage of the game out there. That was the first move to the uh, downside out here since that low that came in back on August the uh, 5th out there. Um, so the typical in a bullish market, it's two bars to the downside that you would typically two consecutive bars to the downside. So that's what we see when we take a look at Apple. Let's go take our next request out here. This is for SNPS. And this is for Mohammed. Mohammed, we take a look at this instrument. This has a TD9 count top that completed two days ago, right at the top of the resistance level of 565.26. That's your TD9 count resistance area. Price is trading below yesterday's low. I would say price should go target the bottom of this profile, which is where the daily oscillator and change line is at, 536.55. If price were to close below 536.55, SNPS would go target 493.71. The weekly time frame. Uh, this week has rallied right up into resistance. It was both the bottom of its weekly profile, which formed above price, and that's at 579.73, as well as its green oscillator and change line, currently printed at 573.26. Um, so you want to, um, what's that suggest? That suggests that this wants lower price. If we take a look at the monthly time frame, TD9 count top, no, we, don't, we have a Rhodes Mentum Indicator top. But price finding support in the, uh, well, take that, it found support at the top of its profile. 495.32. I would say what is driving these charts right now, the time frame that's the driver in the bus, is the daily time frame. Now, this is going to be the second day to the downside. So, you know, even though you've got that TD9 count top, so much like much of the market, and that makes it really complicated, Mohammed, to know is this just simply a, a, a your typical two bar knee jerk reaction? Again, coming off of the low for SNPS, the low that formed back on August the 5th, this is the today would be the first two bar knee jerk reaction. And in bull markets, which right now I'd have to say this is likely in, at least on the daily time frame out there. Um, I mean, it's neutral because it's got a TD9 count top. So I can't say it's all out bullish, but right now it's perhaps more bullish than it is bearish out there. Uh, so that's what we've got for SNPS, Mohammed. I hope that helps you out. Uh, Dan wanted to take a look at SMR. And the question is, is this forming, has this formed a bottom? So we take a look at this instrument. What do we have out here? The daily time frame. So I've got no pattern per se that I can identify. So what, here's what we know about the daily time frame. And your answer, your question, your, the question you asked is, has this bottom? I would have to say the answer is no. And the reason I'd say the answer is no, we take a look at the daily time frame. We're trading below red oscillator and change line. That tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. We're trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. That's at 1024. We are trading into, it's still trading into the swing point from back on August 5th. 5 million shares. Yesterday, you closed inside it with 3.5 light volume. Today, we've done 1.6. That's another light volume-ish type day out there. But as long as price remains inside that swing point, that means below 886, we may go see a test of that low, that being 726. Let's look at the weekly chart for SMR. The weekly chart shows us that we are consolidating with inside its profile. Your support level on a further move to the downside will be at 764. The weekly the monthly time frame chart shows us, um, really, it shows us not much we're trading above its oscillator and change line trading above profile um, i think it's more likely that it's the weekly and is a daily time frame out here uh dan that is uh uh, uh who i think was dan that would ask about this uh uh is, is really controlling things and both of those are suggesting lower price at the uh, moment out there now let's look at a 30 minute time frame chart because are we really going to see lower price today? And it will all be determined based upon whether or not price can close above 880. So 
on 880 is a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And if price can close above that, then that's going to signal to us that we should see a further, at least a further intraday rally out there. So that's what I would be watching is that TD9 count breakdown level. So, Dano, I hope that that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for your request. Next request coming in is from Jody. Joe wants to take a look at FXY. Joe, I'm going to come back to FXY because this is the ETF for the yen. So in order for – because in looking at this chart here, quite frankly, it's tough for Stevie to make heads or tails about what this is telling us. But I will try. But first, just simply to do more justice to your question, let's go take a look at the currency pair. So let's go – we're going to take a look at three currency pairs, as a matter of fact. So let's take – let's start with your Japanese yen. So that's going to be the center charts out here. My apology again, as I mentioned, I had an issue just before we came on the air. I couldn't reboot. Uh, I could have rebooted, but then uh, I would definitely have been looking for a book of jokes to be able to read to you. So when we take a look at the uh, yen out here, on a daily time frame, here's what we know about the yen. The yen has a nice TD9 count bottom. Now, I'm not sure why it stopped where it did. In other words, pattern-wise, I don't know why it rallied up in that high on August 15th. But right now, what we are seeing out here, if you just look at those days, and I'm going to start here from uh, August the 15th. The very next day, a lower high. The 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 next day, a lower high. Today, a lower high. You kind of get that lower high vibe, uh, uh, Joe, from uh, uh, from me. And now we're trading below that red oscillator and change line. If we close below 145.04, this is a Japanese yen. We're trading inside that TD9 count that formed on August 5th. We're likely to go explore lower price, maybe even get down to that low. That's the daily time frame for the yen. So if the X, FXY is uh, as uh, which direction? I think it's in the opposite direction. Is that the short? Um, must be. Is that the short? Yeah, it must be this. Must be the short. So if you're looking to go short, you'd love to see the end in close below 145.04 out there. But no, <laughs> that your target is actually that low at 141.69. So I don't know if that's really the greatest reward risk on FXI or not, but at least those are the parameters that I would be watching. What's the monthly time frame chart showing us? Monthly time frame chart, I'm sorry, it's the weekly chart. The weekly chart is below. Let me just expand that out. That way you don't make the same mistake that Stevie did. Of course, my mistake was calling it a monthly chart. And here you can see that this is suggesting lower price. But here again, uh, it just simply may be seeking out that swing point low from down at 140.02. That takes us back into, let me get my cursor, the early part, maybe February, that February of 2024, December, December 29th of 2023. Uh, we get back to this break. Hey, notice on the uh, euro, you're going to complete a TD9 count top today. The same thing on the Great British Pound. So we may be seeing that pull back. And if that pulls back, the dollar goes higher. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So, Joe, we're going to go take a look at those FXY uh, charts out here. Again, it's, um, you know, you've really got to pay attention to what's going on with the currency pair versus this FXY uh, chart, which, you know, you can see all these gaps. It's, it's they're not usable from that standpoint. But here I can share with you that uh, price should go target 64.52. You're trading it with inside a bearish structured profile. You're in the sell zone right now. Price above that green oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame suggests a further rally because we're trading above profile resistance at 63.47. And the uh, price can break through 64.52. The next upside target would be 67.98. But please, 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 please. Please pay attention to what's going on inside the actual currency, the Japanese yen out there, because these charts are not going to do us a whole ton of good out there. But thank you so much for the question. I hope that that information helped you out, and best of luck to you on your trade. Dano wants to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. When we take a look at Occidental Petroleum, there's a potential that this is forming a Rosemontum indicator bottom today. There's a Three River Evening Star that is likely to form. And you're trading with inside its profile. Now, just because it formed a bottom doesn't mean it's got an easy journey to the upside because price is going to go take on its sell zone. And the sell zone on a daily time frame for Occidental is between 56.93 and 57.56. So likely to get a bottom, battles up top. Weekly time frame chart, which has got that TD9 count top, has found support at its breakout level, which has been tested for the last four weeks, last month. That level, 57.03. Am I concerned if we close a few pennies below that? I'm really not based upon the daily time frame chart and it's a roads meant to indicator bottom. And the monthly chart, let's get this decorated out here. One of the problems because of my system issues, but you can see that this formed a roads meant to indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile. This has been a very long term consolidation, so to speak, almost taking us back to June of 2022. So nothing here to suggest that this is going to end. But, but where price has been finding support is at the center of that bullish structured profile, 54.84. The next level of support, should price move lower, would be 50.05. Your resistance area is going to be at 69.24. So that's what we see when we take a look at Occidental Petroleum, a potential for a uh, bottom today with uh, price taking on that resistance zone all the way up to 57.56. That's the level, Dano, that you'd like to see price close from a bullish standpoint. Not today but simply close above that level. Uh, both Jack and Eddie wanted to take a look at NVIDIA out there. And the question basically is, where is this thing headed going into earnings? So yesterday, in the case of NVIDIA, was a TD9 count top. 
So earnings is sometime next week. I apologize. I don't know uh, when that day was, even though one of you might have given that to me. Uh, the high is 130.75, the high of that TD9 count. If price closes above that between now and earnings, well, then the suggestion would be that this wants to move higher. If it doesn't, then all that I can share with you is on a daily time frame, we've got a TD9 count top and a new profile that formed yesterday. So I can share with you where support is at at 121.17. Resistance, 130.75. Steva, what happens if price closed below 121.17? Then the next area of support would be down at 103.43. I think the question from uh, from uh, Jack was, you know, should we should he hold this going into earnings? So earnings isn't today. I don't believe that it was Monday out there. The first thing you want to do is wait till the day before, at least at this stage. Where is price trading? Or even the day of, are we trading above 130.75? Are we trading below 121.17? If we are, then it would be, you'd, you'd kind of uh, be, uh, uh, you've, you would have been given a tell, so to speak. Because when we look at the weekly time frame, TD9 count top out there, new profile that is formed, resists at 131.60. So you got 130.75, 131.60. Make it the 131.60 level that price needs to close above to suggest that we had higher. But then the question is, well, if we had lower, you had 121.17, Steve-O. On a weekly time frame, you below that, you've got 104.33. And then the daily breakout level, 103.43. The weekly, the monthly time frame has a TD9 count top. It completes this month. It's already in place out there. But price is tested and rejected that green oscillator and change line. It is in a bullish condition, period, end of story. On is it a bullish breakout mode but you've got the td9 count on the daily you still have that top uh, td9 count on the weekly with price consolidating with inside profiles it is not clear to stevie where this is headed uh, out there um and uh, to, to suggest uh, so you've got a, i don't know where you're in on your uh, trade inside of nvidia uh, what your time period uh, was out there but you've sat out i would well i don't know when you got into the trade but you've certainly but potentially if you were in the trade before june 21st you sat out that first move to the downside out there um so no let's let's take a look at this whenever this has got earnings next week well, right back to me. Well, that is unless it's Thursday and Friday. So I will uh, I'll be out of town next week on Thursday and Friday out there. So I will not be able to host the show. Um, but uh, hopefully earnings is before that. We can take a look at this again, Jack and Eddie out there. But right now, just a consolidation uh, within profiles daily or weekly. Uh, GTE wanted to take a look at Baidu. B-I-D-U is the ticker symbol out here. What is this doing? It is consolidating with inside its daily profile. Uh, this morning, it tested support or close to support. And that was at 83. 97 the bottom of this profile should this rally it'll rally into the sell zone the sell zone is between 8901 and 9045 what's the weekly time frame chart show us it shows us right now it is trading below its red oscillator and change line if price were to close below that that being 8595 it would suggest lower price we're also testing the swing point the swing point from the week of august 9th 11 13.2 uh, million shares traded that week this week we are down with 17 million shares so if we close below that red oscillator and change line again that number is 86.95 it should then go target the bottom of that swing point because we're trading into that swing point with volume the low of that swing on a weekly basis 85.10 now i'm not saying it'll get down to 85.10 until we see a close below 83.97 that's the bottom of that daily profile and right now it's suggesting that it should rally uh, out there on a daily time frame the monthly time frame baidu has a td9 count bottom that formed last month that completed the pattern this month their price were to close below last month's low last month's low was 8508 that would suggest lower price so you get a nice bottom on the monthly potentially on the uh, weekly uh i don't really have a bottom pattern not at least that i visually see right now and on the uh, daily time frame you know, consolidating with inside his profile levels out there. So that's what I've got for you, GTE. I hope that helps you out. And as always, thanks much for your request. Let's close out this segment by taking a look at uh, Taseco Mines. TGB is the ticker symbol. And this, from this is for Dan from New York City. So, Dan, what I see out here is a wave seven bottom. Let's letter G that formed back here on August the 6th. Um, it's possible that yesterday was the C point of an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. We wouldn't know that unless price were to take out the swing point, the potential swing point, the high from August 19th. And that high is up at the 234 level. 234 is probably where price is going to go target. And that is also the top of its profile out there. Nothing to suggest that it won't do that. Um, 
but that's the likely outcome is that uh, Tosenko Mines wants to go target the top of that profile. No top that I have. You'll see a TD9 count pattern. You'll see the number nine, you know, one through nine, but the high of this pattern came in on bar number seven, and therefore we don't consider that to effectively be a TD9 count topping signal. The monthly chart here for Tosenko, price pulled back. It has a Roach Mentum indicator top, but now support is held. And it's really two levels of support. The bottom of the profile, 195, the uh, uh, oscillator changed on at 208. So it's possible that the work to the downside has been done, at least for this time, in Taseco Mines. Dan from New York City, hope that helps you out. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break out there. We'll figure out how we're going to go ahead and end the show. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. we got still all the U.S. indices trading the upside out there. Let's uh, take a look at what's going on under the covers. These are the top eight holdings with inside the S&P 500. Most of these are also the top eight holdings inside of the NDX 100. So we took a look at Apple. No reason for us to re-review re that. Microsoft still has its TD9 count top. Now, price is sitting at a potential support level. That's that oscillator and change line. Additional support below is at 408.87, 402.26. TD9 count top still in effect for NVIDIA. We've kind of already covered that. Downside target, 121.17. Amazon has a completed TD9 count top. Its price target is going to be the 171.11, 173.26. Those are lower price. We take a look at Facebook. 
Facebook does not have any kind of a topping pattern that I see out there. Google may have topped about four days ago. Price had rallied back towards the center of that bullish structured profile where a counter trend move would end. Uh, however, price remains above its oscillator and chains on a blow support. So it's kind of in a no man's zone out there or a no woman's zone. If we take a look at Berkshire Hathaway, if it did close the day above 451.28, we're at 451.18 right now. That would negate its TD9 count top. Otherwise, price should pull back towards the 446.20 level. In the case of Broadcom, TD9 count uh, topped in place. Price should go target the 160.71 or 157.37 area. So here's your top eight holdings. And we got markets that are rallying very nicely out there. But guess what they're not doing? We done the, the top eight instruments here have not negated their topping signals. Of course, Meta did not have a top. Costco is uh, the uh, is one of the instruments that's inside the NDX 100. It has a TD9 count top, but here price remains above the top of its profile. You're not seeing the chart. I'm just simply narrating it for you uh, out there. So even though it's got a top, it's still more of a neutral type signal. I guess lastly, let's uh, switch over and uh, see if I can get this up on our screen quick enough. It'll be some intraday chart. I don't know whether it's the ES or it's the NQ or whether it's gold. We didn't even talk about gold out here. Uh, this is the ES mini. So what do we see out here? What do we see? We see a TD9 count top on the 60-minute uh, time frame. Uh, you got one that might form on the two-hour time frame at the end of the day. Um, we may just simply be consolidating with inside profiles. So that's all Stevie's got for you. I want you to have a fabulous weekend, a fantastic Friday, a safe one out there. And I'll look forward to being back with you Monday morning at 11 a.m. sharp. Take care, and thanks for joining us today.